to give you a quick introduction of who is currently speaking. Hi everybody, my name is Miriam Garvey and I am a final year student pharmacist at the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy and I serve you as your APHA ASP national member at large and the liaison to the National Standing Committee on Member Engagement. Also joining me on the webinar this evening is your 2017-2018 National Executive Committee and a number of members from each of our five national standing committees. The information, or for the contact information for all the APHA ASP national officers can be found on pharmacist.com or at the link above, which will be shown again on the last slide. Before we begin, we're going to go over a few procedures to make this webinar run smoothly and effectively. Everyone is currently on listen-only mode. You can either listen in through your computer speakers or through your phone using the phone number and the access code on your screen. We just ask that you please mute yourself on your cell phone in order to avoid any background noise. We do have time for questions at the end. So during that time, if you click the raised hand icon, we can unmute you and you will be able to ask your question. If questions come up during the webinar, please feel free to type your questions in the question box of your control panel throughout the webinar, and we'll be sure to get to all of them at the end. So, Let's begin with a poll to get a better idea of who we have on our call tonight. So, which National Standing Committee are you interested in learning more about? I'll give you a few seconds to select the following. You may select more than one. Great, so it looks like we have a variety of interest on this call. For those of you who are interested in learning more, hopefully this webinar serves as a way for you to find your best fit. Also, throughout the webinar, if you hear of standing committee positions that another member of APHA ASP would be, it would be great at, encourage them to apply or learn more. I know that many of our national officers applied because someone else saw great leadership qualities in them. To begin our webinar tonight, we will briefly go over each of the five national standing committees and then open up the floor for our Q&A session. A description of each of the standing committees are available on pharmacist.com, so take this opportunity to learn more about each of our national standing committees and get your questions answered. So let's get started with our webinar tonight. Above are the five national standing committees who carry out the majority of business of APHA ASP. The five national standing committees are as follows. Awards, communications, member engagement, international, and policy. It is truly an honor and extremely rewarding both personally and professionally to serve our academy from a national level. And just as a reminder, if any questions come up during the presentation, please feel free to type them in the question box and we will address them during the Q&A session. For my visual learners, I thought it would be helpful to break down the structure of our National Standing Committee positions. Each of the five National Executive Committee members serve as liaisons to the five National Standing Committees. Each Standing Committee has four appointed members. Of the four appointed students per Standing Committee, one student serves as the chair, which is something that you can select for consideration on your Standing Committee application and the other three students serve as members. The one that is different is the International Standing Committee, where instead of a chair and three members, each position of the International Standing Committee has their own role that you would apply for. And as a side note, 
the student exchange officer is a two-year commitment and you must have a graduation date later than March or May 2020. So the first standing committee we will talk about is the award standing committee, which will, who will actually be meeting next weekend at APHA headquarters in Washington, D.C. to carefully select the national award winners who will be recognized at the APHA annual meeting and exposition in Nashville, Tennessee. APHA ASP national president-elect Nimit Jindal is the liaison to the awards standing committee. Awards is chaired, chaired by Sarah Wheeler, who is joined by Alyssa Hopsicker, Lisa Panaris Jacobs, and Sienna Meter. Their role is to select the recipients of our various awards by reviewing the chapter achievement reports and applications for individual awards. They work hard to recognize the dedication of the chapters and members of our academy. In addition, they are also responsible for updating the award reporting guidelines as they see fit. Our award standing committee members are very organized, detail oriented, and self motivated as a large por portion of their work is completed independently from their respective homes. If you like to read, especially about the unique projects and programs and the events that each chapter and members participating in, Awards may be the committee for you. Next is the Communications Standing Committee, affectionately known as ComCom. National member at large, Allison Cagle, currently serves as the liaison. Sarah Massey is the chair, and Mark Gillum, Jillian Lung, and Natalie Tucker all make up the Communications Standing Committee. They are essentially the voice of the Academy and the faces behind each of our national social media pages and initiatives. They're constantly looking to showcase your chapter's activities, as well as disseminating important information, such as dates, deadlines, and upcoming events. The APHA ASP national Facebook page, for example, has over 15,000 followers, and ComCom's posts often reach thousands to hundreds of people. They work closely with the eight regional members at large who help search chapter social media pages for unique events and initiatives. It's pretty exciting to amplify your voice of the Academy, and they're always looking for unique ways to show our nation what APHA ASP is all about. They each have varying strengths, but perusing social media is definitely across the board for all of them. Creativity and flexibility are key strengths as well. Next is the Member Engagement Standing Committee, which is actually our newest committee, previously known as the Education Standing Committee. I, I serve as the liaison to this committee. Shannon Parkey is the chair, and Megan Peterson, Kevin Mai, and Priscilla Sanchez all comprise the Member Engagement Standing Committee. Our role involves reviewing, evaluating, and updating many of our patient care and community outreach project guidelines and recommending any new offerings in an effort to address the needs of our members. This year, we've been working closely with the membership vice presidents to assist with the fall and spring membership drives, as well as setting them up with the APHA engaged community. The members are also responsible for reading the patient care award submissions, which keeps them engaged with what chapters across the country are doing throughout the year. It's our job to make creative content that keep your chapter members engaged and to also highlight the amazing work you all do to make APHA ASP shine. Our member engagement standing committee members are hard workers who are critical and creative thinkers. We're frequently looking for new and innovative ways to promote membership by finding or updating valuable member benefits. Next is the International Standing Committee. Both our APHA ASP National President Michael Murphy and President-elect Nimit Jindal serve as co-liaisons to the International Standing Committee. The International Standing Committee is a little bit different from the other standing committees. 
in that each of the four members serve in specific positions that relate to their roles within the, in the International Pharmaceutical Students Federation, or IPSF. Jimmy Godwin serves as the Chair and Student Exchange Officer. John Ving Punyarthi serves as the Student Exchange Officer-Elect, which is a two-year commitment. Caitlin Krug is the national contact person and Andrew Gott serves as the national project coordinator. Their roles involve representing the Americans, the American Pharmacists Association Academy of Student Pharmacists internationally and enabling APHA ASP members to connect with the international pharmacy community through student exchanges, world health campaigns, international conferences, and internships. And last, but absolutely not least, is our Policy Standing Committee. Jason Gaines, our APHA ASP Speaker of the House, serves as the liaison to the Policy Standing Committee that is chaired by Mary Bradley, Adrian Simmons, Dan Gallipo, and Andrew Stone, who make up the Policy Standing Committee. Of course, much of their work involves working on policy such as working to implement adopted resolutions and keeping the APHA ASP adopted resolutions manual up to date. I recently learned that they're involved in the sunsetting process, which is where they look at all the policies from a given year in the manual and determine if they are still relevant today. They work closely with the policy vice presidents and the eight regional delegates to make this all possible. Our policy standing committee is made up of hardworking students who are very well versed in the APHA ASP policy and advocacy programming and are extremely detailed or oriented. So that's all the committees. As I previously mentioned, each member of the APHA ASP National Executive Committee serves as a liaison to each of the five standing committees. One chair and three members are appointed to each standing committee, with the exception of the International Standing Committee as previously mentioned. The application is available with detailed position descriptions on pharmacist.com and the application deadline has been extended until December 1st at 1159 p.m. Pacific time. Those who have been appointed will be notified approximately by February 1st, and the transition meeting will begin on at the APHA annual meeting and exposition in 2018 in Nashville, Tennessee. And this next slide shows the application checklist. Make sure that you have everything completed when you submit on December uh, 20th at 11.59. And you can find more information on pharmacist.com. We will now go on to our Q&A portion. We wanted to give you all a lot of time to ask the questions that you want to ask. Uh, we am actually joined by several of our committee chairs who will aid me in answering your questions. And I do apologize. Um, you may not, you may now ask your questions. So if you have a question, you may raise your hand or type them in the chat box, and we can take them. So Miriam, your first question is: Is how are the National Standing Committee members selected? That's from Kelly Potts. And I just want to confirm that. On that one side, it said December 20th is the deadline. It's actually December 1st. So I just want to confirm that with everyone online. It's December 1st, not December 20th. So, Miriam, this is Keith. Your uh, first question for this evening is How are the National Standing Committee members selected?
so our first, I see one question. Um, what is the time commitment for one who is serving on the National Standing Committee on Communications? So I'm going to turn that over to Sarah Massey, our communications chair, to take on that question. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me, Miriam? Yes, I can. I can hear you now. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, so the time commitment for our communication standing committee. Um, how we have it worked out right now is that every member Um, maybe staff or the national uh, NEC or other committees, they may have some requests. So we, um, so the, each member will serve as con man or content manager for two whole weeks. And then it goes to the next member and then the next member. And so you have two weeks on and then four weeks off. Um, but during those two weeks, you are searching for content um, pretty regularly. Um, and you're in contact with both the chair and the liaison um, to get all of those posts approved and uploaded and scheduled onto Facebook. Um, so along with content managing, you also have quite a few campaigns that you work on throughout the year. Um, I can't really give a good solid um, time frame that you spend working on all of this, but it is something that you're constantly working on um, throughout the week, I would say. So every week you probably work a little bit on um, Communication Standing Committee. I'm not sure if that's a good answer or not, but it kind of varies week to week and month to month. Thank you, Sarah. And I, I do believe there was a question. I had some audio issues and I didn't hear. So if you could repeat your question. Sure. The, the first question is from Kelly Potts. She asks, how, much, how are the National uh, Standing Committee members selected? Thank you, Kelly, for your question. So the National Standing Committee members are selected, um, they're actually appointed by the National Executive Committee. So um, the other national officers and myself will be meeting at January business meeting um, to look over the applications and discuss which candidates to appoint. And um, this, this, uh, this webinar is recorded, so if you get a chance to go back and look at the different qualities that we look for, um, that's what we look for in our candidates when we are selecting them. I hope that answers your question. All right, the second, uh, it's not a question, but it's more of a statement from Michelle uh, Catino. She says, not a question for me, but I'm a P4. I had a couple people ask if they can apply to appoint a position as well as standing committees. So I figured I'd like other people to know. So uh, great point, Michelle. Um, we'd love for as many student pharmacists to not only apply for the standing committees, but EPHA provides an opportunity for student pharmacists to get involved in such things as the nominating committee um, for the national officers. We offer opportunities for student pharmacists to participate as representatives to APHA's policy committees um, on the big house level. Uh, we offer opportunities for student pharmacists to get involved in a, a variety of opportunities in our publications department. Uh, such as our editorial advisory boards for um, Jaffa, Pharmacy Today. We have a books and electronic products uh, representative who meets with the other pharmacists as well as new practitioners. So um, definitely apply for as many things as you want. Um, and uh, we'd love to have as many student pharmacists involved as possible. So great statement there, Michelle. Um, our second question goes to you, Miriam, here. I said, did any of you hold any chapter officer positions as well as your national committee positions? And if so, did you find the work to be overwhelming? So uh, Miriam, you were an officer, uh, a standing committee member, and then maybe Sarah, if you wanna answer that one after as well. Sure, thank you for your question. Um, so I was uh, an operation heart chair at my chapter while serving as a member on the National Standing Committee on Communications. And um, it was definitely a large time commitment uh, if you decide to go for one of these positions while holding a chapter executive committee role, uh, I would definitely find a way to really organize your time. Uh, it's definitely doable, but you need to have, you know, that time management skill and, you know, make sure you keep a calendar and um, 
you have a schedule of things that you need to get done for the week. Um, but it's definitely doable if you have those time management skills. Sarah, did you want to add on to that? I'm sure. Currently, I serve as just the chair and I don't have another position. Um, in my personal opinion, I think it's hard um, to give time to both in the time that they deserve if you had another position. So if it was me, I probably would only take on one position. But if you're a go-getter and you think you can handle it, then I think definitely do it um, and have two positions. But I know if last year I was chapter president and I don't think I personally could have handled being chair of um, ComCom -Com as well as being president at the same time. Um, that is my personal opinion. So. I'm not trying to discourage anyone, but I definitely think if you want to do your best job at either position is to choose one. Sarah, this is Keith. I couldn't agree with you anymore. Um, I think especially for the communication standing committee, um, it really takes a lot out of you. Um, same for award mm -hmm. standing committee. Uh, to be an officer on the chapter level and on that national level uh, is a ton of work. So I'd, I'd recommend that you choose between the two. The other three committees, I, I think there is some um, some leniency, but but definitely with Com Common Awards because uh, they've got the most work on them. All right, so moving forward here, um, from Hannah Duncan. Hannah asks, uh, is participation in the student exchange program a requirement for the International Standing Committee? Uh, Miriam, do you want to take a shot at that? So. It's definitely um, recommended that you have participated in the student exchange program before applying um, just because you bring that unique experience to the role, uh, but it is not required. Um, but definitely having some sort of international experience would be helpful when you apply for this position. Great. All right, next question is, um, and maybe Mary, if you can jump on this one. Um, Justin George asks, I was wondering how often does the policy standing committee to discuss and assess the policies in the year that they are assigned? Would you mind giving Justin a quick overview of the timeline of what your PSC has been working on this year? Sure. Um, so in terms of when we review the policies during the sunsetting process, um, we will typically do that in one evening and we will what we do is we chunk it off into decades and we will um, go through one decade before a um, call and we will kind of jot down our own you know thoughts on it and then we will all meet together um, during a conference call and decide how we're going to handle the sunsetting process in one evening and then after that we'll update the adopted resolutions book um, that's only one chunk of a, a of our work with policies in terms of actually reviewing old policies um, we spend a lot of our time implementing the newer policies that have been passed in the previous years um, APHA ASP House of Delegates and I, I don't have a specific amount of time that we work on those because essentially we educate the Academy on how to implement those at the chapter level as well. So that's a that's a pretty large part of what um, we do. So we probably spend maybe an hour or two a week working on different projects. Um, it just depends on what time of the year. And um, I will say that we do spend a lot of our efforts just working on policies and implementing them for the Academy though. Did that answer your question? should um, just to add on to that um, so the committees as Miriam kind of touched on earlier uh, come to Washington DC in April and it's usually a Thursday night Friday Saturday and then Sunday you leave kind of around noon um, so we do our Academy's leadership meeting which is a big uh, portion of the time commitment uh, over the summer a lot of our standing committees come to Washington DC during the summer leadership Institute and they use that as a, an Academy's leadership meeting kind of 2.0 uh, to kind of get together uh, with the other committee members and, and maybe hash out some of their to-do lists, reprioritize that sort of thing. Um, we ask our standing committee members to also come to our major regional meetings. Uh, so the majority of our standing committee members helped out with things like the bookstore, uh, if you're in Region 3, or they helped out with some of the policy process, or 
helping with microphones or registration or, or something along those lines. Uh, they've also helped out quite a bit this year with running all of our chapter workshops. And um, the last kind of major travel and, and time kind of that, in addition to what Mary touched upon, you know, kind of on a monthly basis is at the annual meeting. And um, <clears throat> it's at the end of the term where you serve as a member of the APHA House of Delegates, as well as uh, participate in all of the, um, whether it be policy or member engagement or communications, all the chapter officer workshops that we conduct during the annual meeting. So you help run those with the National Executive Committee member in addition to serving the House and serving as a, in a couple other capacities there. So uh, it's a pretty decent time commitment. Um, and you know, we want to make sure that student pharmacists really kind of key into that as they're moving through. So hopefully that answered your question there, uh, um, uh, Justin. Um, we had a question from uh, Taylor. Taylor asks, if you want to pioneer a new, pa a new patient care initiative, what would be the best committee to apply for? For example, would it be best to apply for a member engagement or policy committee? And I'll actually take that question um, for you guys here. Uh, the best way to pioneer a new patient care project is to talk with APHA staff, um, honestly. Um, with all of our um, patient care activities and programs, they all need to be supported by uh, um, a company, a, a pharmaceutical company, a, a chain pharmacy, something along those lines, um, in order for us to be able to implement and run those. So we'd be happy to talk with you over the phone to learn a little bit about what you'd like to do uh, with the patient care project. So um, I'd, I'd say... Member engagement is our committee that focuses quite a bit on the patient care initiatives, but talking to staff would really help out and, and help that process move forward as opposed to you know, applying to a standing committee. So hopefully that answers your question there, um, Taylor. Um, all right, moving forward here. Um, Margaret, if you'd like to answer your, ask your question live here, I'm gonna unmute you. So Margaret McKenzie, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, my question is, do students need to be an officer or chair in order to apply for these positions, or can they be a member and just be interested in applying? Miriam, you want to take that one? Of course. Thank you so much for your question, and I'm really glad you asked that. You absolutely do not need to hold a specific uh, leadership position to apply for one of the national standing committees or even to run for a national office in the future. Um, all you need to do is be an APHA ASP member. And you know what? If you love APHA ASP and you love to serve student pharmacists, then you can absolutely pursue these opportunities. We want people like that. Um, it's not about the titles. It's about your passion for student pharmacists and the academy. Thank you, Mar Miriam. I really do appreciate that. I have a lot of members who um, want to get involved. However, you know, they feel that they don't, they, they can't get involved all that much because they feel like they have to have a leadership position. So I really do appreciate your answer. Um, I also Absolutely. have another question. Sure. Um, can you explain how the can candidates are selected and announced at annual? So are you referring to the National Planning Committees in particular? Yes. Okay. Uh, that might so, not be a very good question. I'm just curious. No, no, it's a perfectly fine question. Um, so when you apply for these committees, um, as I mentioned earlier, you'll, receive, you'll be notified, usually by a call, um, no later than February 1st. And then you will actually meet at the annual meeting during the transition meeting, which happens at the end of the conference. Um, so the standing committees are not necessarily announced at the annual meeting, but they will be recognized at their outgoing meeting for their hard work that they put into their committees. Does okay, thank you. Yes, it does, thank you. Absolutely. And I have one more question, if you don't mind. Go for it. Do the committee members receive some form of support in order to fulfill their duties, such as you know, traveling, that kind of thing? Or do we have to plan accordingly? Um, do we have to set up fundraisers ourselves? How does that work? So in terms of um, traveling, uh, APHA ASP staff does um, help support that. Um, they do reimburse um, some of your travel and registration fees for certain uh, meetings. 
uh, definitely if you are, especially if you're going into your fourth year, you'll want to notify your advisor and experiential coordinator um, to make sure that you are able to attend um, the specific meetings that are required for standing committee members. Um, but as always, APHA staff um, and the National Executive Committee are always supportive. Um, if you need anything from us, we're here as a family for you. Um, and, you know, just make sure that, you know, you have your school support before going into this kind of position and you should be fine. Excellent. All right. That was it. Thank you so much. Of course. Absolutely. And feel free to be Thanks, proud if you have any more questions. And I'll just jump in with some specifics there. So when we bring you in for the Academy's leadership meeting, which is the communication and member engagement, international and policy standing committees, we pay for your travel from the moment you leave your door all the way to when you get home. So that's flight, hotel, your meals during that time. Summer Leadership Institute, we give you a comp registration. Annual um, MRM, we give you a comp registration to come to the meeting. And then uh, for the awards committee, when they meet in November, it's the same thing as the um, <clears throat> Academy Leadership meeting. Your, your costs are covered from the moment you leave your door to the time that you return. And then uh, for annual meeting, we also provide you with a comp registration to go to the meeting. So. Um, it is quite a bit, and we, we try to help as much as possible, like uh, Mary misstated there. So, all right, next question, we'll jump over to Sarah. Um, Sarah, this question is from Alex, and says, if I'm applying for ComCom, for videography, photography, or graphic design experience, does this have to be an example from APHA ASP, or can it be personal projects as well? Um, I think it could be... I think our goal was to have it be APHA ASP, but if you don't have any um, videos or photography that you've done for APHA ASP, go ahead and submit the um, personal videos. Um, the NEC will be evaluating those and they can look into that and see what they think. But I think if you have something, go ahead and submit it. And I, Keith, I I'm not sure that. if you have another opinion yeah. on that. No, I think you're absolutely correct. I, we're looking for your creativity and the quality of the work. So if you have something from a previous organization or you know, cool things that you just love to do on YouTube, um, we'd love to see that. All right, um, next question, we'll go live to Nicole uh, from Region 4. Nicole, Hello. go ahead. Hello, thanks, Keith. Um, so my question is kind of more geared towards the policy standing committee specifically, but I'd also appreciate anyone else's input for anyone else that might have the same concerns. Um, but assuming that you have your college's um, full backing for these positions, I still kind of wanted to know if serving on a standing committee affected uh, one's APPI experiences in any way and if you encountered any difficulties and if there's anything that you might recommend to someone who is scheduling their APPIs right now. Great question there. Mary, do you want to jump in? Sure. Um, so I'm currently a fourth year student and um, the chair of the, state, the policy standing committee and I haven't had any um, interference with my APP experiences. Um, the only month that I've kind of had to work with my preceptor to organize travel so far um, was during July during the Summer Leadership Institute and I essentially just had to work out that I would miss um, the Friday of the conference and then I would go back in on Monday like everything was normal. Um, my preceptors have been really flexible with me. I've expressed, you know, my role with the committee bef and before I would ask um, for some time off, but I haven't had any issues with it um, in terms of traveling or time experiences either. Okay, thanks, Mary. Yeah, no problem. I'd say our, our national officers have a tougher time um, because they do a lot more travel related to student outreach. Um, but the times that you're going to get probably the most um, kickback is around the meeting. So getting time off for annual meeting, getting time off for the academy's leadership meeting, um, those are probably the, the more difficult times. Uh, the rest of the year, I, I think ComCom and awards, they probably have the more uh, regular week-by-week -week schedule, um, whether it's reviewing the award applications or um, submitting posts um, 
every day for a couple week period there. Um, I think if you have good open lines of communication with your other committee members as well as your chair and the national executive committee member, you'll be able to mitigate some of the um, some of the rigors that kind of happen with going to you know a critical care rotation and having to post during those couple weeks there while you're in critical care from you know five o'clock in the morning to to ten o'clock at night versus maybe a little bit easier rotation. Maybe you can sub in for one of the other committee members during that time. Um, so a lot of it comes down to communication, everything you're doing, you know with everything else that you're doing there. So, but good question. Any other? None for me. Okay. All right, um, we've got several questions related to the uh, International Standing Committee. Um, and we do have uh, Jimmy Godwin on the line here. Um, I'm gonna try to bring him in in one second, but I will have uh, Miriam, um, actually Mary, answer this first question here. So it's. Um, Evan from Purdue, he goes, I noticed that a duty of the policy standing committee is to work with the regional delegates. Does this include attending the regional meetings with your respective regional delegate? So would you mind giving a quick overview of what you did leading up to MRM and uh, even the webinars and stuff before MRM? Sure, happy to. Um, so the relationship that the policy standing committee has with regional delegates Essentially what we do is each one of the standing committee members works with two regional delegates and we try to make sure that both of the regional delegates that we're working with are outside of our own region so that we're able to um, get some exposure to other regions as well. Um, and we, we kind of help with uh, the policy development process beforehand. Um, we do help with some of the webinars leading up to MRM. Um, but mostly we serve um, as a, in a supportive role for the regional delegates because um, that's really their, their um, project is working on the MRM and getting all the policies in line for each respective region. Um, in terms of having to go to the, the regional meetings, um, it's not a requirement. Um, it's definitely a great time. I wouldn't discourage you from going, but it's not necessarily a requirement as a policy standing committee member to go from the policy process side of things, um, because most of our efforts come in actually um, after resolutions have been passed at the APHA ASP House of Delegates. So we serve um, in more of a supportive role for regional delegates um, leading up to MRM and then after MRM. Great, thank you so much, Mary, I appreciate that. All right, I'm gonna unmute Jimmy Godwin, uh, who is on our International Standing Committee. Jimmy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Great, we have multiple questions related to IPSF, so if we can kind of take care of all of those at once, I think you'd be the best person to answer these. Um, so the first question is from Lauren. Lauren asks, what is the relationship like between the International Standing Committee and IPSF? Okay, so it, it's going to depend on what position you're in, but for the most part, you are going to be the representative for APHA within IPSF. So you're going to have uh, be communicating with your counterpart on the international level. So each IPSF organization has their own uh, pharmacy student organization, and they will have a corresponding position in that organization, and you will be communicating with those members internationally. Um, so that's the main relationship. You're also going to be communicating with the uh, IPSF executive committee um, and just kind of taking any information that IPSF gives us and disseminating that to our members here at APHA ASP. That that help answer that question? Yeah, I think it does. Uh, Nancy Tang asks, are the members of the committee required to go to the international conferences such as the World Congress? So it's not an absolute requirement, um, but we do encourage members to try and make that uh, commitment. Uh, the reason being is that we need to have at least two delegates uh, that serve as delegates to the IPSF World Congress, and we would prefer those to be members of the International Standing Committee. Um, however, they don't have to be. So like I said, it's, it's preferred that we have members from the International Standing Committee go to World Congress, but it's not an absolute requirement. Great. Um, Dominique Taylor asks, when applying for a position for the International Standing Committee, do you need to mention what position you want to apply for? 
or if you're considering for more than one position, um, will you be considered or selected uh, for them independently? So tell us a little bit about um, maybe each of the positions and, and kind of what you're looking for with uh, SEO Elect and, and some of the other positions that we have. So for the position of SEO Elect, um, we're going to be looking for someone who is familiar with the Student Exchange Program. Um, it's a highly, you're going to be communicating a lot with lots of different people from all over the world. So you need to have good communication skills. You need to be very detail oriented because it's got a lot of moving parts, and um, you know you're going to have to have uh, pretty strict deadlines that you're going to have to meet as far as when this student exchange program is taking place. Um, so those are things that we need to look for in the student exchange officer elect position. Also, the commitment, the two year commitment. Um, you want to make sure that you are committed to serving in that role for the full two years. As far as the national contact person, um, they're going to be dealing mostly with uh, being the main point of contact for APHA ASP uh, with IPSF. So they need to have good communication skills, um, good make sure they're detail oriented as well, so they don't miss any deadlines or uh, miss any information that needs to be communicated to our students here within APHA ASP. And they also coordinate the uh, World Congress and uh, Pan American Regional Conference that we have. And so um, they'll be communicating with students as far as that is concerned. Um, National Project Coordinator position is going to be dealing with helping support IPSF uh, projects and campaigns and helping our students here in uh, APHA ASP implement those at the chapter level. So they're going to be doing lots of reading, lots of reports, um, helping support students who might not be sure how to implement IPSF projects and campaigns, and then also uh, reporting back to IPSF what we're doing here on the local level. Um, so that, that's kind of like a brief introduction to the, to the positions and kind of what we look for um, in future members. Great, thank you very much. Um, I think that's it for international IPSF questions, but if there are any more, I'm going to unmute you and have you answer those if you don't mind. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So, um, Sarah, would you mind answering this one? What has been the most challenging and the most rewarding part of being on a standing committee? That question is coming from Chelsea Beavers. Okay. I can totally do that. Um, I would say the most challenging part um, for me, especially on ComCom, has been just the time management. I've learned a lot about myself um, and my team on how we can manage our time, um, and we've worked really hard to improve managing our time throughout the last six months. I think the most rewarding part has been um, to be a part of every chapter's, like we're kind of in the know. Um, I get to see what chapters are doing every single day. And I think it's one of the most rewarding things to see the impact that you all are having on your patients and your communities. And then we get to spread that um, nationwide and see that kind of growth. And it's been really rewarding. So that's, that's what I think. Um, but other people may have other opinions of what's most beneficial to them as well. Mary, why don't you jump in as well? So definitely having served as um, a member of the Communication Standing Committee, I do have to agree with Sarah. Um, the most challenging part is time management. I know that's something that I personally struggled a lot with during my term, but you know, serving also helps you grow and develop those skills that you need as well. So, you know, going into this role, we expect you to have some, you know, time management skills, but we also expect you to grow from it as well. We want you to grow as a leader. Um, so you're not expected to be perfect or anything. Uh, so, you know, definitely for me, it was time management as a challenge. Um, the most rewarding part of it is definitely, you know, seeing chapters get inspired uh, whenever you post or share a video featuring other chapters. I think it's such a beautiful thing when uh, chapters, you know, grow and learn from one another. Great. And then to follow up, I'll ask you first, Miriam, and then ask Mary, because the both of you served during your P3 year. Um, can you just give an overview um, of what it's like to be a standing committee member during school? I know we talked a lot about rotations and, and 
you know, managing that time, but how was it managing time while you were in school? Um, great question. So I'll be honest, um, P3 year at my school or third year at my school is um, definitely a lot of work, uh, maybe a little bit less than second year, but at the same time, uh, it definitely was a lot to balance. So it was a matter of me finding my own system um, to balance everything, including my schoolwork, plus my additional um, obligations. As I mentioned, I held chapter positions as well, in addition to this uh, national position. So it definitely was um, difficult, but I, again, I, I keep stressing this, you know, if you, if you really find a solid system that works for you um, to schedule your tasks, and manage your time and you really stick to it, it is absolutely doable. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just echo what Miriam said. Um, I was in a little bit more of a unique position as I was also my chapter's chapter president while also serving on the National Policy Standing Committee. So I had to be very um, diligent with my time management skills. Um, I was best friends with my Wonderlist app, um, and I kept a pretty uh, um, uniform to-do list, and I would always keep myself on schedule that way. Um, in terms of coursework, it's a, a balance. It's, I, my school is also a little bit um, less work our P3 year than our P2 year, um, but I took some more um, rigorous um, electives. So I had to kind of, it's all just the fine balancing act is what I can say. And I would definitely um, echo everything that Miriam said. And just knowing your limitations is going to be what helps you succeed in any role, especially a, a standing committee role. Great. Thank you so much. All right. These are all great questions tonight. Um, this is for Vivian. Uh, Vivian asks, um, hi, what's the general timeline for the member engagement standing committee? How often does the committee meet uh, to discuss membership drives, patient care reports, and so on? Uh, so Shannon Parkey, who is the chair of the Member Engagement Standing Committee, is on the line. Shannon, do you mind answering that one? Yeah, no problem. Um, can you hear me okay? Absolutely, thanks. Okay, uh, thanks for that question. So um, the Member Engagement Standing Committee is still pretty new, um, so it's just kind of rolled over from that education focus to the member engagement focus. And so I would say that um, this is only our second year, so we don't kind of have a timeline set up like ComCom does or anything like that. So um, it's a little bit more lax on that end. Um, we're definitely still trying to come up with more of a schedule like that. But we do meet monthly to discuss our work, um, but that is just kind of on a webinar like this. Um, we can see each other and we just kind of discuss what's been happening the past month. Um, we're definitely always communicating on Facebook Messenger and things like that um, about different projects. And um, as far as the patient care reports go, that was more so done like the award standing committee does it. So it was on an individual basis. Um, you could come up with your own schedule for however many reports you wanted to get through in a week or a day. Um, as long as you met the deadline to get all of the reports read, that was more on your own time. And I would say that most of the things that we work on are kind of the same thing. We get our assignments at the beginning of the month and there's kind of many deadlines throughout, but it's definitely up to you to time manage and make sure that you're meeting those deadlines and getting all of your work done within the month before we kind of switch roles around at the end of the month. Um, and again, kind of midway through the month, we have a call where we discuss all of our work going on and how we're kind of tackling that. So it's not like you're alone, but you are kind of doing your own time management. Great, thank you. And then do you mind, um, do you mind following up with this question here? Um, so uh, one of our students asked, can you give me some advice as to what expect when I, or if I hear back to become a standing committee member in February? Kind of um, any lessons that you've learned, um, kind of being on that national level uh, over the past year here? Um, that question is from Taylor. Yeah, sure. So 
Definitely the day that I got that call, I was very excited. Um, definitely, I was not ready for my role to end within APHA ASP. So I was very excited that I had the opportunity to continue to lead and definitely on a national level. I was definitely not one that was going to run for a position um, on the NEC. So I was really happy that I was going to be able to continue on the standing committee uh, level. I think um, for me, one of the greatest things that I've learned from this year is kind of to just be up for anything and to be a little bit more laid back um, because you are working with student pharmacists from across the country and you're not just working with your chapter that you've come to know about how they work. Um, so it's learning about how different people work together. Um, our standing committee is comprised of a member from every time zone in the country. So that's been really um, interesting and rewarding to try to work in that sort of environment. Um, does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, I think you did a good job there. Thank you very yeah. much. All right, um, so there's several questions that are in here that I'll kind of jump on <clears throat> related to qualities that we're looking for as a standing committee member, uh, as well as specific things within the application itself. So <clears throat> this question was asked by Alex, Alice X. If you select yes, I would like to be considered for a chair position. Does that mean you'll only, only be considered for the chair position or you'll be still considered for a regular member position on the committee? Um, so, Alex, when the uh, National Executive Committee goes through all of the applications, uh, they look to see who wants to be on what committee first, so that we kind of break those up into the, the individual committees. Then we start ranking the students uh, within that list of committees. And from there, somebody indicated that they would be interested in serving uh, as the chair. You know, we'd, we'd consider that, but it doesn't preclude you from being a member of that committee. Um, it just kind of helps us decide who our chairs would be. Um, the next question uh, was asked if you are elected um, from being, a, if you're elected as a national officer and you um, uh, unfortunately have to give up your standing committee position, if someone uh, is replaced, how are they replaced on the committee? Is there a wait list for standing committees of some sort? And that uh, position, that, that question was asked by Caitlin. Um, Caitlin, so what we do is we take uh, all of our standing committee applications. Last year we received, we received over 100 applications for um, those uh, 20 positions there, and um, we do. We actually put the, the four students on the committee, and then we have a, a list of two or three alternates uh, that we kind of keep in mind uh, if we do have a national officer um, be a, you know, that we have to re replace that position. So uh, for the past several years, that's happened quite a bit, I think, Two years ago, we had to actually replace two or three officers. So uh, it does happen, um, but we always keep a list of those student pharmacists who uh, applied for the standing committees uh, in the process there. So well, we try to try to always give ourselves a list. Um, I do have several questions related to um, how and who should write your letters of recommendation. Should it be a student? Should it be our chapter president? Should it be a chapter advisor or a faculty member? Um, Stephanie asked that question. I think Jose asked that question, a couple others. Um, what we're looking for is somebody who knows you well, um, somebody who can articulate what you've been able to do uh, as a leader within your local community, what you've been able to do as a leader within your chapter, uh, as well as um, you know the specific area that maybe you're looking in, they can attest to those skills. So if you've participated in, say, Legislative Day or, or helped lobby on Capitol Hill uh, within your state capitol, um, we want to know those type of things and how well you did at those. Um, that will definitely put you uh, to the top of the list, uh, say, if you're applying for the Policy Standing Committee, for instance. So um, it doesn't have to be the dean. Most often the deans write terrible letters of recommendation because they don't know really, really well. Uh, but what we're really looking for is somebody who can, who can attest to those, those skills that we're really looking for in each of these positions. And <clears throat> with, this, with the Standing Committee positions, unlike an APHA ASB national office or being a national executive committee or even being one of our regional officers. Uh, as Miriam indicated earlier, the positions are very individual. I know you're on a team, but you're working kind of individual and, and you're kind of doing the, the background work of the academy. So we're looking for folks who are extremely organized, who are very diligent, um, detail oriented. Um, you can meet deadlines. You're a good time manager. All of those things really help 
uh, as a standing committee member because the work is quite a bit as you kind of go through the year. Um, so those are kind of some of the things that we're looking for there. Um, Kristen Wines asks, um, uh, if you're not selected for a standing committee, can you, uh, could you please tell us a little bit more about the appointed positions that we have? There's a short description, but who would we contact more for information on those roles? Uh, Kristen, feel free to give Crystal Atwell, Tom English, or myself a call or an email. Uh, APHA staff would be very happy to kind of go over some of those other positions that we have uh, and, and how you can get involved uh, and what qualities we're looking for in those folks. So, um, Mary, I'm, I'm kind of looking through uh, a lot of these other questions. I think a lot of them have already been covered at some point. Um, Kaylin Davis asks, if we're interested in applying for a committee and we do not get one this year, what kinds of things can we do to make ourselves a competitive and worthy candidate for the next go round? So do you mind answering that one? Of course. Thank you for your question, Kaylin. Um, I would definitely say be involved in your chapter, uh, whether that's through an official leadership position or just getting involved. You know, when I was starting out, I, I volunteered for all the patient care projects, and that's something that I love to do. So just stay involved as much as you can. Um, you do not need to hold a title uh, to be considered qualified, as I mentioned before, uh, for any of these positions. As long as you're a passionate member and, and you want to help the academy, then you know, you'd be considered uh, qualified, in my opinion. So. Just make sure you stay involved. Make sure you're staying up to date with the projects and programs of APHA ASP um, and be able to kind of convey that uh, when you do apply the next year if that is your plan. Great. Um, and I think those are pretty much all the questions here. Um, if anybody has anything else, if you wanted to raise your hand and ask your question live, we can do that. But I'll, uh, I'll turn it over you, Miriam, and Sarah here to close. All right. Thank you, Keith. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. And I'm so excited to see so many people interested in these positions. You know, like the APHA ASP National Standing Committee is really how I got my start on the national stage. And I'm so grateful for the experience. And, you know, if you do apply and get selected, I know that you will have a blast. Um, and you will definitely love APHA ASP and serving student pharmacists so much more. So with that, Sarah, did you have any closing comments you wanted to make as well? No, I just want to thank you all. Um, and we're really excited. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to any of the chairs or members or NEC, and we will help you as much as we can. Absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. Yes, Sarah mentioned, reach out to us anytime. Uh, we're so happy to help you. We're all an APHASP family here, so don't hesitate to reach out. All right, guys, thank you so much again, and have a great night.